Uh, I've been on the community call, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago, where I demonstrated what Bot Framework Composer actually is. So if any one of you was on that specific call, you might um, see some slides which, which are familiar to you. But just to set the stage a bit, um, I'd like to introduce you to what the Bot Framework space actually is, what it does, uh, what the offerings are, um, because Nowadays, you can have multiple ways of building bots actually in the Microsoft um, ecosystem. You can have either write it in code with the bot framework SDK, um, or you can go along with Power Virtual Agents, which is a Power Automate like uh, interface for building codes without actually writing, for building bots without actually writing code. Or you could use um, one of the brand new tools from the bot framework team called Bot Framework Composer which allows you to actually build a bot uh, without actually writing code. So it's a graphical user interface, which allows you to build your bot and scaffold your dialogues and so on and so forth. And so mainly Composer is um, one of the new ways of building bots, uh, especially targeting uh, non-developer audiences. So let's say IT pros or power users could also uh, use Composer to get started building their bots. Uh, which doesn't mean that developers can't use it. Uh, of course, uh, it makes some 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 things easier in your bot development uh, routine, uh, especially for proof of concept uh, projects or stuff like that. You could make use of Composer to rather quickly have a bot up and running, and then take that bot which you outlined in Composer into Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code and uh, enhance it by by um, code either C sharp or JavaScript or whatever. And so Composer mainly is kind of a new tool uh, for you to to uh, get started into uh, the bot development scene, especially if you haven't built a bot yet uh, using the Microsoft tools. It's a pretty good uh, starting point because it basically includes everything you need in terms of bot development within one tool. Uh, it's available as a desktop app, so you can download it. I'll provide the link uh, afterwards as well. Um, and yeah, so Composer mainly consists, as you can see here, uh, of a graphical user interface uh, for outlining what's called a dialogue or many dialogues uh, with different triggers. So um, it's kind of similar to what Power Automate offers you in terms of the UI, um, where you just have your What's, what's called waterfall uh, dialogue uh, diagram in here, starting from the top, um, which represents one single part of your conversation with your bot. Uh, and in there, you have multiple options um, to bring life into your dialogues. You can, of course, uh, send responses. You can ask questions, validate those responses um, from your users, uh, either um, by text validators, by number validators, by data validators, or what have you. But you can also make use of uh, other action types, um, which we'll see later on in the demo, um, in terms of integrating other APIs into your bot. And mainly, what the Microsoft Graph is is a is a um, is a good uh, example of how to actually make use of an API within a bot, because you can easily call the Microsoft Graph endpoints within your bot using Composer um, and requesting, for instance, for uh, the user's profile or for the user's tasks or even uh, going one step further, adding tasks to your profile or whatever. Um, and so, so mainly Composer is uh, depending on also some, some bits of uh, cognitive services for language understanding, of course. Um, so it's tightly integrated in Composer. You don't need to go into another portal or another UI to uh, scaffold your language model. The same is true for the language generation piece. Um, so it's everything is baked into Composer um, and everything is baked into what's called an adaptive dialogue, um, which gives you the flexibility to start with Composer, which actually writes the code for you uh, in, 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 in a JSON schema, and then take that dialogues uh, or dialogue trees to, let's say, a developer for enhancing them or for adding additional functionality, which is not yet uh, implemented in Composer, if you will. And so why would you use Composer along with the Microsoft Graph? Of course, 
the Microsoft Graph offers a lot of uh, capabilities, uh, especially in, in, in uh, bot uh, development scenarios, which you can make use of, for instance, um, handle task management, handle task management in teams, right within teams. Uh, you don't need to, um, to switch the context to your to do or to your planner. Why shouldn't the bot be able to handle the user's task management right within within the conversation, for instance? Or another example would be uh, look up uh, contact details of details of specific people within your organization. Or um, if you write in Teams uh, and you you got an email, uh, you could ask the bot to to um, represent the email and respond directly within Teams, for instance, or show the next calendar meetings or what have you. So there are a lot of use cases why why you would use a bot um, for for uh, handling specific tasks, and the Microsoft Graph, of course, offers a lot of capabilities in there. And the cool thing here is um, you don't need to write code at all, or you, at least you don't need to write that much uh, of code if you using Composer versus the classic um, development using the bot framework SDK. So um, let's jump into a demo. I've prepared a bot for today, um, which is pre-built already, um, which has some, uh, some components um, already configured. So what this bot actually consists of is multiple dialogues, which you can see here on the left. Um, so it has the capability of handling tasks, it can view the tasks of a, of a person. It can add tasks to a to-do list uh, for a specific person. And the third capability is showing the profile. So showing profile is the, the most simplest thing in here, um, which actually, uh, first of all, does an OAuth uh, login dialog. So we get basically a user token um, for the Microsoft Graph. And the cool thing here is um, OAuth logging is one of the predefined uh, actions within Composer. So what you actually would need to do is to simply create an Azure AD uh, app registration, which I've done before. Um, of course, select the, the API permissions you, you want to use within your bot uh, and consent them. And then just take the connection name of that uh, Azure AD application and paste it in here into the OAuth login uh, action, and that's pretty much it. Uh, and you have your uh, OAuth dialog ready, uh, ready to go. So the show profile dialog kicks off with the OAuth dialog, so it will ask the user to log in. Uh, and after that, what it does, it basically sends an HTTP request to um, get the user user's profile. In in this particular case, it's the profile of the of the person. Uh, who is logged into the bot uh, or to the conversation. And then uh, what we get back is a simple JSON response, uh, which will store in a variable or in a property called user.profile result. And from that property, we basically just select the user's display name, the job title, and the user's mail email address and store them into separate properties. And what we then do is we use those properties and generate a uh, an adaptive card from that. So we basically have a function called show profile, which takes in the user's display name, job title, and user's email address, and generates an adaptive card uh, for us. This looks basically uh, in the practice like this. So this is my my bot, um, Parker. If I now uh, want to show my profile, I'll just select the help button to see what the bot is able to do, and then click on show profile. And what it actually does now is it kicks off the OAuth dialog, asks me to log in. If I'm now lucky, I'll be logged in successfully. And what it then does is it reaches out to the Microsoft Graph, as we can see down here in the traces section, and gets my profile information. So this is rather simple. Um, if I now want to go ahead and uh, select the help again, and I want to view my to-do tasks, and on the right-hand side, I'll open my to-do list. I have now a list uh, within my to-do called to-do, and in there I have two uh, still open tasks, and one is already completed, so I'll have them on the right-hand side. This is my to-do list. The left-hand side is my bot conversation, so 
these are basically the same. And now the, what the bot actually does is upon telling me what my tasks are, it also asks me, do you want to uh, add a new task to my list? So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to uh, give my task a name and give it some arbitrary name. And what happens right now is that the bot will reach out to the Microsoft Graph again and see on the right hand side, my to-do list has been updated immediately. So it's basically really fluent uh, in a way that on the one hand side, the bot actually does the task handling for me. Um, and on the other side, uh, I don't need to write code anymore to, to integrate certain APIs, like in that case, the Microsoft Graph or any other API, I just do it via um, using the composer tool uh, and clicking and, uh, and doing it via the UI. And as the time is already kind of finished, uh, if you wanna learn more about it, um, here are some links. Uh, if you wanna take screenshots uh, from that, um, if you wanna download the composer tool um, and basically give it a try, there are already some um, predefined uh, what's called skills uh, using the Microsoft Graph from the Bot Framework SDK team. So you can check out them for calendaring, for to do, for lookup person. Um, these are pretty good um, to, to have a kind of starting point for that. Thank you. Excellent, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you. We're always running out of time on these things, yeah. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> there's so much cool stuff to talk about, but really cool demo. And it, it's nice to say that you can do all of that power uh, with just with the composer. So really, really cool stuff. Mm -hmm.